So ladies and gentlemen, uh, you are welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we are going to look at the clinical correlates of the effect or of the problem associated with uh, the lipoprotein transporters as well as the uh, uh, cholesterol. So now we are going to look at actually the clinical correlates of the high concentration or high amount of the uh, bad cholesterol in the body. So now we have a condition called atherosclerosis, which involves the formation of lipid rich like in the intima of the artery. So generally from our previous video, we discussed that we have what we call a good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. So generally cholesterols are supposed to be synthesized and be maintained in the liver. But the bad cholesterol, which is LDL, VLDL, and IDL, they actually try us always to pack the cholesterol from the liver and take them to the wall of the artery. And as a result of that, it will now lead to the formation of the plaque. And of course, look at it here. You can see this is the wall of the artery. And as a result of the plaque of the uh, cholesterol on the wall of the artery, then of course, it now leads to the decrease in the area. And of course, remember, from the basic knowledge of physics, you know that uh, we know that fragile is equal to force all over area. So it means that the relationship between uh, the relationship between fragile and the area is inverse relationship. So when this uh, cholesterol, uh, when the cholesterol from the plague on the wall of the artery, then what happened? The um, area there will be reduced. So, so therefore, when the area is reduced, then the pressure will go high. So as a result of that, the blood will be pumping with very high pressure. And that is a conditions, what you, that is a condition called atherosclerosis. So the plague is begin as fatty pigs containing foam cells, which initially are macrophages filled with oxidized LDL. So actually, this early lesions developed into fibrous plagues that can in, that can accumulate an artery and cause the myocardial infarct or cerebral infarct. So the formation of this plagues is often associated with abnormalities in the plasma lipoprotein metabolism. So if the lipoprotein metabolism is not actually, or if there are abnormalities associated with the uh, lipoproteins metabolism, then of course, this bad, bad cholesterol, especially LDL, will be carrying or will be loaded with a lot of the cholesterol and then deposited on the wall of the artery. And as a result of that, the fly will form, the area will be reduced, and then the, 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 the pressure of the blood will increase to the decrease in the area. So that is condition what we call atherosclerosis. So atherosclerosis is a condition where the cholesterol from a plague on the wall of the artery, which leads to a condition called hypertension. And this atherosclerosis that happens for it occurs due to abnormalities in lipoproteins metabolism. So then that is that. Then the next thing that we are going to look at, apart from this clinical correlates, then we are now going to see how I uh, So you see, this is what happened. The originary, the original coronary artery, and this is fibrosis, and this is the return fibrous curve, and this is the cholesterol rich curve, and this is thrombus, and then this is the inflammatory regions. So of course, when the cholesterol block or clock, the one of the artery, then the blood fragile or the blood fragile will go very high because the area for the blood to form is very, very, very small. So then now let's look at the high density lipoproteins. So high density lipoproteins is a class of lipoproteins produced by the liver and intestine. So HDL, which is known as high density lipoproteins, it is produced in the liver and intestines. So the HDL is composed of phospholipids and one or more alpha lipoproteins. So you see, 
The HDL is made up of phospholipids and one or two alpha lipoproteins. And then in cholesterol transport from peripheral tissues to the liver. So what it does, the HDL is actually, its, its role is in the metabolism of the other lipoproteins. It plays a role in the metabolism of other lipoproteins and in cholesterol transport from the peripheral tissues to the liver. So actually the most important functions of the high density lipoproteins HDL that save the body from the Golovin heart disease is the transport of the cholesterol from the uh, peripheral tissues to the liver. So what it does actually the HDL is so when the VLDL transports the cholesterol from the liver to the wall of the artery, then the HDL will now take it back from the wall of the artery back to the liver. So it's like it is a remedy. It's always trying to protect us from the effect of the bad cholesterol. So LDL and HDL may combine to maintain cellular cholesterol balance through the mechanisms of LDL moving cholesterol into the arteries and HDL removing it from the arteries. So if these two lipoproteins can work hand in hand, can work together so they can actually maintain cellular cholesterol balance. But when you find a situation, because the most important thing is that you need to understand that there should be a balance between the concentration of the LDL and the HDL. So in a situation where the cholesterol supersedes or the cholesterol concentration supersedes that of the LDL, sorry, the, uh, the, the situation in a situation where the LDL concentration supersedes that of the LDL concentration, that is when a lot of that is when a lot of cholesterol will be deposited at the bottom of the artery. So that is why sometimes you need to do things that will actually make the concentration of the HDL to go high. And what do you do? Sometimes if you are taking vegetables and fruits, they increase the concentration of the HDL. Physical exercise and also avoid tobacco smoking. These are the three things that always are uh, involved in increasing the concentration of the HDL. And if you are doing this, of course, there is a likelihood that you are going to have uh, a balance between the cholesterol metabolism and the body. So that would be a balance. So then, now, what are the actually the functions of high density lipoproteins? So look at what it does. You see, this is the HDL. The HDL. The HDL levels are atherogenic, whereas elevated HDL levels protect against atherosclerosis by removing cholesterol from the vessel walls and transporting it to the liver where it is removed from the body. So you see, look at it. This is the LDL. So the LDL here, but look at what the LDL. The LDL is packing the cholesterol, depositing it here, and then the HDL is now using shovel to remove it and will borrow and then take it outside. So these are the some of the functions. These are the some of the functions of the HDL. Remember that we said that the HDL is actually made up of lipids, proteins, and some lipoproteins. proteins. And these are some of the functions of the HDL. It is function as an antioxidant, anticoagulant, and blood protein, and then it's also used in anti-inflammatory. Finally, it also involved in the removing cholesterol from the vessel walls, as shown here. So these are the four major functions of the HDL. It works as an antioxidant, it works as an anticoagulant. It works as, as an anti-inflammatory. And then finally, it works as a cholesterol remover. So it removes cholesterol from the vessel walls. Yes, so this is the functions of the HDL. That is high density lipoproteins, and we shouldn't forget about this. Antioxidant, anticoagulant, anti-inflammatory, 
and also involved in the removal of cholesterol from the wall of the artery. Okay, then um, the next thing is actually uh, estimation of the total cholesterol. How do we estimate the total cholesterol? And of course, why do we need to actually estimate the total cholesterol? So, hypercholesterolemia leads to, when you said hypercholesterolemia, it means that high concentration of the blood. So, hypercholesterolemia leads to myocardial infarction, that is heart attack. If the concentration of the cholesterol is very high, if the concentration of the cholesterol is very high, then what will happen? It will lead to heart attack. Why heart attack? Is because we know that the, the artery is the one that is responsible for transporting oxygenated blood, oxygenated blood from the heart and to the other part of the body. And now there is a cholesterol that form a plague on the wall of the artery. So what will happen? What will happen? You have it here. This is this, this is your artery, and then there is now a lot of cholesterol deposited here. And there is oxygenated blood. There is oxygenated blood that went the fast too. But as a result of this, means that if the plague here is formed, it means that there will be no more space for the um, oxygenated blood to flow. So what happens if there is that? It means that there will be low oxygen delivery in the body. So if there is a low oxygen delivery in the other part of the body, what will happen? That is what will lead to heart attack, stroke, also peripheral vascular diseases. So you should understand that alpha cholesterolemia is associated with myocardial infarction stroke and peripheral vascular disease. So these balances can be changed by if you have high cholesterol in the blood, that is high cholesterolemia, then you can balance the situation by medications and food choices. choices. So you need to know that if you have a situation like this where you have high cholesterolemia, number one, you know that the food that heavily rich in cholesterol, you have to try as much as possible to avoid it. You have to avoid it. Like any leafy foods, you try to avoid it. Or you reduce the intake of the lipids containing rice fat and oil. And then the second one is medications. And also, advisably, if you have this hypercholesterolemia, then you need to go and seek for the medical attentions. Which types of the drugs are you going to take that will reduce the cholesterol in the blood so that to avoid stroke, peripheral vascular tissue, and heart attack? And then in terms of the food also at the same time, it is always advisable also to be taking fruit and vegetables because they are highly rich in HDL. And that will also try as well uh, as much as to balance the concentration of the cholesterol. So we have to know that it is very, very important. So there are medications and food choices that will balance the condition of the cholesterol. But so what happens when you have hypocholesterolemia, hypo that is a low concentration of cholesterol in the body? So the search into the causes of this stage is relatively limited, but some studies suggest a link with so when there is actually a limited research on that, but there are some few uh, research that shows that low amount of the cholesterol, remember from the previous view that low concentration of the cholesterol is 
So the high con uh, yeah, concentration is associated with the synthesis of steroid hormones, vitamin D, so many other things. So now the problem is you now have no concentration of the cholesterol in the, in the blood. So what would happen? So that there is a likelihood even those steroid hormones, testosterone and progesterone, their concentration would be very low. So it means in terms of the sexual activity, it would also be down. And then it's also associated with depression, cancer, and cerebral hemorrhage. So too much cholesterol is a problem. It's associated with heart attack, stroke, and vascular disease. While low concentration of the cholesterol is associated with depression, cancer, and cerebral hemorrhage. So in, gen in general, the low cholesterol level seems to be a consequence rather than a cause of an underlying illness. So any of the either two is a problem. So we need to maintain a cholesterol metabolism balance. So that is why the HDL and the VLDL concentration in the body are the most important thing. So in this video, as we are going, we are actually going to see how we are going to estimate the concentration of cholesterol in the glass or in the urine. So now, expected values. What is the expected values of the cholesterol? the expected value. So you see, there is a risk classification, desirable. The total cholesterol in the blood, we measure it in milligrams for the CDTA. So the total cholesterol, desirable, desirable it should be, it should be less than 200 milligrams for the CDTA. So if you have total cholesterol is less than 200, milligram for the cylinder, it means that you are normal and you don't have any issue. See, that is why I look at it here, the border line and the desirable. You see, the board, the, the desirable is 200 milligram per deciliter, but between the 200 to 220 to up to 239, it is actually, this is a borderline, this is a borderline. So the cholesterol, if it is between 200 to 230, so this is a border. And when the total cholesterol is greater than 200, is greater than or equals to 240, so it is hard. You need to find a way of reducing that. So that is the total cholesterol. And then, of course, for the LDL cholesterol level, also a milligram for the CDTA. So the desirable, the desirable is, should be between 100 to 130. And of course, the border line is between 130 to 160 milligram for the CDTA. And it is high when it is around when it is between 160 and 190, it is high. And it is very high when it is 190. So you should know the LDL cholesterol, that is the bad cholesterol, the one that transports oxygen, so that transports the cholesterol from the liver to other peripheral tissue. And then we also have HDL cholesterol level. So the HDL cholesterol level, the major risk, the major risk is when it is between 30 to 40 milligrams per deciliter. And of course, if you have it 6 to 70, it is the less risk. It means that you are, you have a less risk of becoming, or of coming off with a cardiovascular disease. So, ladies and gentlemen, one very important thing that we should understand, one very important thing that we should understand when we are thinking about the issue of 
the cholesterol or cholesterolemia or diseases associated with the high cholesterol. You can measure any of this one, then it will give. By measuring any of this one, it can give you an idea of the current status of the patient. Like for example, if you can now, if you measure cholesterol level and you find that it is around, it is less than 200, then it means that there is no need to go for the LDL or VLDL cholesterol. And if you go for the LDL cholesterol, and it gives you between 100 to 130. It means that you are also normal. And of course, with the HDL also, if it is 60 and above, it means that you are also normal. So any of the tests you take here will give you an idea whether you are normal or you are not normal. So ladies and gentlemen, it is very, very important. It is very, very important to understand this kind of test. So the lipid profile test is trying to give us an idea of how someone, of how someone, of how someone is actually having a high risk of coming up with cardiovascular disease or depression, cancer, and other diseases. Because the high cholesterol have problem and the low cholesterol also have a problem. So it is good to always estimate your total cholesterol level. So if whenever you see that you are overweight, sometimes it is good to measure your total cholesterol level. It's just simple spectrum for Toyota. You can do that. So now let's look at uh, the objectives of estimating cholesterol or HDL cholesterol. So now the total cholesterol determination in different serum sample. So in this case, you are going to use we are going to estimate the total cholesterol in different serum sample, and then the HDL cholesterol determination also in different serum sample. So that is the objectives of the result of, 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 of the experiment. So let's now start with the estimation of total cholesterol. So there is a principle behind the estimation of the total cholesterol. What is the principle behind the estimation of the total cholesterol? So there is an enzymatic reaction sequence employed in the assay of the cholesterol is as follows. So it's like a coupled reaction. It is a coupled reaction. So this is the cholesterol and it is an indirect. This is your cholesterol. So you have a cholesterol esters. Then you need an enzyme called cholesterol esterase, which break down the cholesterol esters into free fatty acid and glycerol. And then the glycerol will now react with free oxygen using cholesterol oxidase to produce all extreme 3 one plus hydrogen peroxide. And then the hydrogen peroxide generated at the second reaction will now react with four amino antiferrin plus panol in the presence of peroxidase to give a quinone imine, which is pink in color. And of course, this quinone imine pink color will now be measured spectrophotometrically at an absorbance of, at an absorbance of, uh, five, yes, at an absorbance, I think, uh, yes, 505 nanometer. So the cholesterol are hydrolyzed to produce, look at it, the cholesterol are hydrolyzed to produce cholesterol. And then the hydrogen peroxide is then produced from the oxidation of cholesterol by the cholesterol oxidase. And in a couple reaction catalyzed by peroxidase, you know, imine red color dye is formed from four amino, uh, four amino antiferrin, phenol, and hydrogen peroxide. And of course, the hydrogen peroxide uh, sorry, the 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 quinone imine uh, pink dye will now be measured at an absorbance of five hundred and five nanometer of the solution of this dye, and is proportional to the concentration of cholesterol in the sample. So, if you are able to get the absorbance, the absorbance of the cholesterol or the absorbance of the quinone amine at five hundred and 
five nanometer, then the absorbance is directly proportional to the concentration of the cholesterol. Meaning that the higher the concentration of the cholesterol, then the higher the absorbance. So the higher the absorbance, the higher the concentration of the cholesterol. Of course, remember from the BSR Lambert law that absorbance, absorbance, absorbance is directly proportional to the concentration, which actually proceeds with of course absorbance is equal to molar extension coefficient concentration times part length. So if you now get your absorbance at this 500 and 5 nanometer, then it will give you an idea about the concentration of the cholesterol. So there is a formula that we can use in calculating the concentration of the cholesterol, and that would give us an idea of exactly the concentration of the cholesterol in the blood. So how do we do that? Let's proceed. So these are the material. First, you need a material. So there are materials that you are, that you need for this experiment. So there are enzymatic reagent, uh, cholesterol enzymatic reagent, which comprises. It's a, actually it's a kit experiment. You use a kit. So the kit contains four amino antiferrin, cholesterol esters with greater than one hundred and fifty enzymes. You need five liter cholesterol esters. Peroxidase, phenol, sodium, uh, collate, and then non-reactive stabilizers and fillers. So these are the reagents that are found. These are the reagents that are found in the kits for the total cholesterol assay. And then in the experiment two, the cholesterol standards, we need a standard for the experiment. So the cholesterol standards is cholesterol in alcohol. And then you, na you need town different some sample. To different some sample. So the sample that you are going to use. So questions and the three questions when you want to do this kind of experiment. Number one, cholesterol that's enzymatically agent contains phenol. So avoid contact. So specimen should be considered as infectious handle appropriately because you are collecting blood sample or serum sample from a non-person sometime. So you don't know, even if it is non, you might not know that maybe that he has any of the infections. So you have to handle it appropriately so that to avoid contaminating yourself. So this is how to do the procedure. First, you will have a blank, you will have a standard, and you have a sample one, and you have sample two. So the blank is containing 2.5 mil. And so the blank can be just distilled water. And the standard, remember, is the cholesterol. So you have 2.5 mil, and then you have sample then you have 2.5 mil sample one, then also for the sample two, you have 2.5 mil. So free warm, after you have this, then you free warm it at 7 degrees centigrade for three minutes and add. So for the standards, you have 0 0.025 mil of the standards. So you add this to the standard. And then of course, for the sample one, you add 0 0.025 mil of sample. So this is what you need to understand, ladies and gentlemen. You need to have a four different test tool. You need to have a four different test tool. In test tool one, you take your enzymatic reagent, that is your kit, you add 2.5 mil in the blank, and you also add 2.5 mil from the standard, you also add 2.5 mil in sample one, and then you also add 2.5 mil in sample two. Now, after you free warm that cholesterol enzymatic reagent, after you free warm it at 30 degrees centigrade for three minutes, then for the test to containing the standard, then you will now take 0 0.2. 25 mil of the standard that is cholesterol in ethanol, then you add it in the standard test tube. This test tube contains the standard. 
Then for the sample one, you take 0 0.025 mil of the sample one and you add it into test tube one containing 2.5 mil of the cholesterol enzymatic reagent. And then for the sample two also, you take 0 0.025 mil, 0 0.025 mil of the standard and then you add it inside the uh, test tube containing 2.5 mil of the cholesterol enzymatic reagent. Then you mix and then you incubate it at 37 degrees centigrade for 10 minutes for the reaction to occur. And then you read the absorbance of the standard and the test as at 200, at 505 nanometer against the plaque that, against the plaque that doesn't contain anything. So then the calculation. So to calculate the absorbance, to calculate the, uh, the concentration, to calculate the concentration of the standard, this one should be concentration of the standard. The formula should be something like this. Concentration of the sample, the concentration of the cholesterol in the sample is equal to absorbance of the test, that is the absorbance of the sample, then they divide by the absorbance of the standards, bracket then times concentration of the standard, times concentration of the standards. And that will give you the, con the concentration of the test. So you can say here, you can say concentration of the test or sample the same thing. So this is the formula. So after you now take the absorbance of the test, then you now divide it with the absorbance of the standard, then times the absorbance of the standard here, times the absorbance of the standard. So whatever it gives you, then you now compare it with the concentration of the standard. So usually the concentration of standard is 200 milligram per DL, so it's already given here. So when you take the absorbance of test, then you divide it with the absorbance of the standard, then times 200 milligram for the liter. So whatever you get after the calculation, then you compare it with the 200 milligram. If it is below that, or if it is actually less than 200, it means that your cholesterol level is normal. And if it is above that, then it means that you are at risk. And if it is above 239, that is 240 and above, it means that the cholesterol is very high. So this is how to measure the absorbance of the standards. So then the next thing is actually calculation of total cholesterol, HDL, LDL, and VLDL. So we are going to meet in the next video for the continuation of the lecture. Please, if this is the first time you are coming to my YouTube channel, please subscribe. Thank you.